Hello everyone, welcome back. KJ4YZI here with Ham Radio Concepts. October 16th, 2016. The Kenwood D74, I made a video on my YouTube channel. It's over five years ago. Gigaparts at the time hadn't let me borrow this radio when it first came out. And I checked it out. And that's probably the only Kenwood video I've ever had on my Ham Radio channel. I haven't had too many Kenwoods. I do like, the, I mean, I've had a D700, D710, love those radios, but you don't see much Kenwood on my channel. A lot of people ask that. So five years later, I sold a few things and, you know, remember I sold everything for my house and, and I ran out of stuff. So I decided I wanted this radio. I started looking at it again. All of a sudden I woke up and like, gotta have it. And so I sold some things and actually Gigaparts had this in their used section as open box with all original accessories. And this thing I'll show you, when this came, it looked brand new in that box, okay? And <clears throat> so the thing about these are, somebody commented like two days ago on Facebook and they deleted their comment, I'm not sure why. Oh, $200 is the max you would ever pay for one of those, wrong. These things are going for eight, $900 because they're discontinued now. They don't make this anymore. But it's still feature packed. This is a, a serious radio. And when I was at Huntsville with Gigaparts up there in Huntsville Hamfest, a uh, couple people, followers, the YouTube channel, you might have seen me there, they came up to me and said, hey Eric, I scored this new, you know, new old stock uh, D74. They paid $900, $1,000, $1,100 for one of these. Okay? So I, at the used section of Gigaparts, paid just over $800. Now there's another one on, you, on the used section of Gigaparts right now, and they only want less than 500. And it says used very good. I think this was excellent. That way, I mean, there wasn't hardly any, I mean, everything was like original, like it never been opened. But um, I, I sold a few things, I bought it from them, they shipped it to me. And no, this isn't a review for anybody else, other than the fact just telling you that I wanna give you a couple ideas on why I bought this radio and why I'm gonna start using it. Let's just touch on it five years from now and just look at, without an in-depth review, nobody's asking me to even do this video. I bought this my own money used on Gigaparts. I'm just gonna give you an idea because I think it's fitting because a lot of people with 86,000 views on my original video said, hey Eric, what happened? What, did you ever get one? Why not? Oh, I love this radio. This thing's cool. Let's get into it right now on Ham Radio Concepts. Ham Radio Concepts is brought to you by HamRadioPrep.com. It's never been easier to learn about Ham Radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit HamRadioPrep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, HamRadioPrep.com. Okay, so the D74... I'll give you why I bought it first, and I'll give you a couple of highlights on uh, what I've heard from other people about this, okay? And what I know about it from my previous video. The reason I bought this, so three bands, this does two meters, it also does 220 and UHF. But it's also a general coverage, coverage receiver that will actually receive upper sideband, lower sideband, AM, FM, CW, and it also has D-Star in it. So yes, you can listen to 80 meters on here. You can listen to um, uh, CB if you wanted to on AM. You can listen to, you know, 10 meter sideband. Sometimes you don't want to get on HF, but you want to sit outside and just listen to the people and you don't want to have a, you know, a, a sideband receiver out there or all mode receiver. Right here, this thing will do that. So that's pretty cool. In the event of a natural disaster or emergency, if I'm not being casual and I want to use this for hurricane season, I could listen to the, you know, Hurricane Weather Net and some other HF. I have my HF gear, but if I want to listen to this just while I'm in a vehicle that doesn't have it, have it here. And I think you actually have to use the bar antenna or hook up, you know, something better than this to receive uh, sideband. Okay, so 220, the addition of 220, it is a 5 watt handheld, the addition of 220 megahertz with D-Star because I don't have a D-Star handheld anymore. Now, we'll get to that in a second. And then, of course, the, uh, like I said, the, uh, all the way up to 999 megahertz, I guess. Okay, so AM broadcast, uh, stuff like that. AM receive on aircraft, all kinds of stuff. Now, the D-Star. So it's got D-Star in here, but it's, what I'm used to is the ICOM's way of doing D-Star. Meaning, every ICOM radio that I've ever owned or used, the 5100, the 51, the 4100, the 31, the 7100, which I have, the 7300, the 9700, 
the 78 or uh, 7610, you know, all those radios have the same menu structure. I can get on that thing in minutes. I will tell you, it took me 20 minutes to figure out how to change a tone on the analog VFOA. And I did have to go into this manual, which is actually really, you know, easy to understand in the manual from Kenwood, but I had to go through this to figure out, okay, how do I get to, you know, use reflector? What am I doing wrong here? This, uh, how do I link reflectors? I mean, I still got to learn a lot of that, but um, it is not anything near the same as an ICOM radio that I'm used to. So I have to learn a whole new menu structure, but it does have D-Star. The sound quality of this, that's another reason, because I remember when I did the video on this years ago, the sound quality of this, the way they manufactured this case and the speaker is bar none, great sound in radio. I have to say I've had a lot of ICOM handhelds, or not a lot, the 51, um, ICOM ID51A handheld and the Yaesu FT2D, FT3D, uh, FT5D, I just don't think they don't cut the mustard on audio. They, they just don't. They have a lot of waterproofing. Um, those radios are great. I'm selling my FT2DR and all the accessories because that's part of what I am funding this with, okay? So hit me up on Facebook quick because I'm listing it with the RT systems and the external antenna and the car charger and the, the whatever. Um, yeah, it'll be gone by the time you see this video anyways. I'm sure someone will scoop it up. Uh, anyways, so this, the sound of this outperforms. When I'm outside, I don't want to have to take this off my belt clip and put it to my ear to hear what they're talking about. There's a lot of handhelds these days. Unfortunately, China is making the best sounding with Anytone and um, Rotivus and, and all these other ones. Yeah, they're Chinese, but I got news for you guys. They sound really, really good, okay? That's the bottom line. But I'm not saying that the, the, the Icon or the, or the AC ones sound bad. They're just not loud enough for me, okay? So that's another reason. Now, another reason I picked this was because of the TNC. Now, from my understanding, what I, rem what I remember is I can actually utilize or connect to the TNC in here from an outboard source, meaning I can connect my computer to it. You know, the FT2D, FT1D, uh, VX8GR, VX8DR, VX, uh, you know, 5R, you can't directly access the TNC. And from my recollection, and from what I've read, I could use the USB on here and use this for a packet modem or TNC to do stuff like Vera FM for Winlink directly into the radio and extract the data out and use it like a TNC for a packet and stuff like that, okay? Um, the, uh, of course, um, the, oh, let's get into, uh, let's get a color screen, okay? Those were the main things, though. The sideband receive, you know, uh, CW receive, the uh, addition of 220, um, the Bluetooth in here, the, you know, of course, G oh, oh, well, I totally forgot this thing. That's why I was rambling. APRS. I love having APRS in, oh, I did say TNC, but APRS in here. Send messages to cell phones, send messages to email directly through my, uh, SMS gate or WinLink right from this radio. Now, I can tell you, still, I'm trying to figure out because, you know, it says message and list here, but it doesn't work that easy. There's, there's a different menu structure on how to get in there and send a message to a phone number directly from the keypad, type in uh, through APRS. But full-fledged APRS in here. Bluetooth um, for, you know, third-party, uh, you know, earpieces or stuff like that. And, and those are the main reasons that I chose this. Now... What do I not really like about it? Or what, what do I remember some people saying, what do I know about and what don't I care for? Well, number one, <clears throat> this battery does not feel like it's on there as tight as it can, okay? So if I go like this, right, I, I, I wanna preface it with this. It gets tighter when you have the belt clip screwed on, it kind of pushes on it, all right? But, if you don't want to carry the belt clip on there, it just doesn't have a very tight fit. It kind of feels like it's going to fall off. In comparison, my R Finder uh, B1 daily smartphone with DMR and stuff on here. To get that battery off, you better have a key with you, a coin, a screwdriver. This thing is super solid watertight. Sometimes it aggravates me how hard. You know, you can squeeze on it like this. 
and push, but really solid for waterproofing. This, well, I don't think this is submersible. It, it might be, um, it might be waterproof or water resistant, but um, I don't. I don't consider this a really rut. You know what? I'm not going to sound like a. I'm going to look exactly for what the specifications are in here. I don't want to sound like an idiot. I know. Someone just said it. You are an idiot, Eric. <laughs> um, let's see. It's got to say right here on this manual. Yeah, so don't know why I can't find it in there. But the bottom line is um, I don't consider this. I, I, I want to keep it looking nice. I don't want, I don't want to really want to drop that radio, but it seems to be pretty solid, right? I'll tell you this. Also, micro SD if you want to record conversations, micro SD for D star operations, micro SD for, and Kenwood software is free to download and program this right over micro USB. And that's pretty cool because a lot of times now, <laughs> a lot of times you have to buy different RT systems for every radio. Now I, I had the brand new RT systems for the FT 2DR I'm selling, never used it, but I can tell you, that I've already went into uh, Gigapart store and see the RT systems, the soft case, and the double A battery pack for this thing I wanna buy. That's about $100 for those three accessories. I wanna have that because this battery right here seems to, this thing eats up some battery. You get, you get the Bluetooth going, you can turn Bluetooth off. You got GPS going, you can turn that off. Um, the way the speaker is, nice loud speaker and the color screen stuff. This has so many features and you know, things going on in here that it really wipes the battery out pretty quick. The manual does state that the KMB75L lithium ion battery pack will operate at on high power six hours approximate, depending on, you know, six seconds transmit, six seconds receive, and 48 seconds standby. Um, on medium, eight hours, on low, 12 hours, and on extra low, 15 hours. So the standby is a lot longer than if you're transmitting on, you know, high power all the time. Um, I know that the first time I used this, it sat for a while and the battery indicator is just not that, it's not that really detailed up here. It looks like it's either green or not. You see what I mean? That was a big thing with Baofeng radios. People said, well, it's only little three little bars. How do you know the difference between full, half, and dead? Well, sometimes you don't because uh, there's not enough, there's not a nine segment bar indicator there. Yeah, it really, uh, really, everybody told me that the audio is good on here. I, I've known about these radios. I know people that have them in Vero Beach. Um, never had an interest until I woke up one morning. I was like, you know what? I got to have one of those. I got to have one. And lo and behold, there it was on the used. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's what I want to tell you is I got a new toy. Um, you know, if it, I would love to learn stuff from you guys. So if you have any comments about this, please tell me. I'd love to learn about this radio and see, um, you know, what you think about it or what you've had about it or... What I can do with it. Uh, I plan on using it for some satellite work. Um, plan on using it for APRS when I'm, you know, traveling. I plan on using it for D Star. Now I can get a D Star or not on my 7100 ICOM in the truck. I have D Star once again. Um, would I have preferred? And see, I don't think ICOM has any radio like this that has all the stuff in it handheld. But I and of course, Ken, you know, D Star is not just ICOM. But I wish. And you can't have an icon menu on a Kenwood, so I'm kind of stuck there. But I wish the menu was a little bit easier to figure out and the options. They crammed a lot of stuff into this radio. Um, and although all of it's usable, sometimes it's cumbersome to get to those things. That's what I want to tell you. So thanks very much for watching. We have more videos on the way. My son was a cheerleader at like six years old, eight years old. And... Uh, yeah, we're going to catch up because he says I'm out of line. It's time to provide my audience with something to watch. 73 KJ4 YZI.